Well, hey there, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to work on Chapter 12, and we'll just go ahead and get into it. Uh, so the first one's going to be the motor, motor housing. So it looks like the best view for this would be uh, the front view. So we can just draw this profile and then extrude cut it off this portion here. Go ahead and draw that. And as always, I'm just going to ballpark the size and then we'll get into the details for it later. So we can trim off the excess. Kind of a typical setup. I just draw and then trim out what we don't need. So overall width of 11. Okay. And let's do... <coughs> How about we take the midpoint of this bottom line and make it coincident to the origin? Seems like a decent enough starting point. You can hear that beep in the background. Sorry, I need to change my smoke detector and haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, so we're going to make this edge collinear to this edge. And we will say that this center point is vertically aligned to our bottom middle point. That's going to fully define it. I'm not going to add in the fillets here. I'll do them in a uh, feature. Well, you know what? We'll go ahead. Why not? What the heck? So we got a fillet of 0.5. Okay, yep, 0.5. And then we're going to extrude it both ways, four inches. All right, so now we can draw on the uh, side plane here, roughly a triangle so we can just cut off the excess. I believe it was a 20 degree angle, but let's double check. So it's going to be 2 from the bottom and 20 degrees. So then we're just going to do some geometry projection and then make it collinear. And we can cut it. Both ways, through all, cut. All right. So, uh, next we need to add our holes, which are a diameter of one. Set them to equal each other, uh, to be aligned horizontally. And our value, I believe, is one. I was wrong. 1.5 uh, we'll do the given dimension that we all have in the book and it's going to be 8 so then we'll just align this to the center point which we should have some kind of yeah origin point here we'll just say that this equals half of that it's 2 from the back And one over diameter. So then we can cut these. Oops. I believe I may have grabbed a little extra there. We 
go. Somehow I hit the taper, apparently. So, let's see. Didn't we have a wall thickness 0.25? It looks like in doing that, we're going to cut out the bottom. And I believe that's it. Let's double check. This one, you don't actually need a drawing because, you know, you actually look, it just says create these. And then looking on, there's just models. This chapter will be a little bit quicker. Um, and you can't tell. There's no fillet listed. There's no dimension. So, yeah. Let's just double check, though. And make sure all of our edges look right. We should have square edges in the corners. Just like here, around here and here, but nowhere else. So let's double check it out. It's a little harder to see here. Uh, so we'll just do wireframe with hidden edges. So we've got round and round. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, cool. <coughs> so let's jump over to the next one. That's the pivot lash. And that was inches. We'll draw the um, curvy part first. So uh, we use this center point as our basis for everything, I guess. Do a, another circle down here. Honestly, it's kind of wonky from there, so. We'll go ahead and just slap in some dimensions and see where we go. All right, so we'll align these vertically, this vertically. <coughs> We have a radius of 2.5 here. Diamond, oh no, actually, still a radius. A radius of one. Diameter of 1.25. Then it's going to be five from here to here. I was wrong. Actually, not five. And just for the sake of trying to match the book, I'm actually going to. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll just draw this line for now. I'll vertically align it. It's five wide. This is five down. And then from this end to here is 1.5. Okay, so we have a radius of 1.75 and of 1.5. <coughs> Let's see, how do we want to draw this? So it appears that this 1.5 circle. Should be drawn like this. Yep. So the center point is arbitrarily on this line, the end point is the edge of the circle, and then you size it. Uh, so we'll do the same for this side. And then we will a circle of 1.75 radius 1.75 okay so now we'll have tangents and we'll 
copy another one over. We can trim. So I'll trim out this, this, this guy. Something like that. Yeah. And you know, after that we can tidy this out a little bit. Okay. You know, me being me, I'm gonna try to reduce the amount of oops, the amount of dimensions we have. So I'll set these arcs over here to their counterparts. go okay I had the wrong size on this one as it turns out there we go should be 1.5 as a radius okay so let's see uh, need overall length of 9 <coughs> looks like we have lost some data from trimming so, what was that value? Radius of 2.5. See what else we're missing here. Some tangents. When we trim that, we must have lost tangent. Ah, and we need to have our center point touching this line over here. Must have happened when I copied and pasted it. Okay. So now we can draw in this little cut. Does it go through? Yes. So I'll just draw it over here. It's a half inch wide. <coughs> uh, really, I don't even need these lines. And then I'll locate it. Centered along that hole, I do believe. It is. Okay. Uh, and also, we need some fillets. So, raise a 0.5 upcoming. I'll trim this. And if you notice, we lost some geometry there. Sometimes that happens, you know, no biggie. We'll just add it back in. Reset this to equal that one. Something happened with our fillet that we made. Not really. Peculiar. We lost all of our tangents again. <laughs> okay, so... Just need to set this line's vertically aligned to that one. And then let's see here. Reset the circle to equal this one. Sometimes that's a problem when you have something based off of so many other things. You uh you quickly lose a lot of information when that something changes. But you know, we're missing something else here. I'm just trying to find the uh one missing dimension or Item. Looks like our fillet may not equal that fillet. It does though, okay. Hmm. Not sure what the deal is, but we'll just say that this horizontal strand exists. And that'll fix that. Okay, so uh, it's going to be 0 0.75 tall. <clears throat> and then we can go in and draw the edge on we'll just do it on this face we'll just do from the edges Notice I'm actually 
actually orienting the object in a 3D manner. Uh, that's in order to avoid potentially uh, grabbing the wrong edge. So I'd advise you do the same. I know this is a little silly shape, but that's okay. Put in our dimensions. One. Whew. A little small. We'll make it work. <laughs> okay, and then we'll make it vertically aligned. And our height is 1.5 from that edge. Okay. And 0.75 thick. <clears throat> Let's see if we're missing anything here. That appears to be it. Okay, so up next we'll do this piston cap. Zoom in a little bit. It's awfully tiny. <clears throat> okay, so for this one, I think the approach that we'll take will be uh, model it with the hole in the middle, and then we'll remove this face. And then we'll extrude on these extra pieces and the holes and whatnot. Let's give it a shot. It's inches. Um, you know what? I did the wrong view, though. I thought this was on the top view, but we need to do the front. <coughs> Sorry about that. Wrong value. Okay. So we will do the hole it's 3.5 I forget that it does that but and yeah we'll just do that and extrude it 1.5 and see how it goes okay so now let's shell and remove this top face and make it Oh, there it is. Okay. So it's 0.25. There we go. Okay, so that looks a little more similar now. Uh, so we can add in those tabs. I'm only going to draw one, and we'll pattern the other three. It'll be a lot of work to keep drawing these in manually. Notice I always draw with my lines inside of the circle. It's a lot easier to constrain the tangent. So I would advise you doing that. It's the little things, but it does save a little time. Okay. Point five. And 0.5. Did a silly little thing, but that's okay. We'll just move it back. Okay, so make it vertically aligned to the center. And we have a center circle here. A 4.25 to locate it. <coughs> so then we'll just make this little center point coincident. Make sure to change this to construction. Uh, that way it doesn't interfere with your extrusion. All right, and then we can pattern this. Oop. Select the wrong thing, just hit hold control and click it again to deselect. All right, so now, We'll just change that to four. I think it was four. And we can do the same thing with these circles. What's cool though is we can actually just project one. Extrude that little guy that we projected.
and we can do a pattern of this little hole. And I believe that is correct. Is it six? It's actually eight. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for that one. Uh, let's see what's next. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this one's going to be a little time consuming. Uh, so I've already made the dryer housing. Prepare for this one. Okay. So in order to draw our dryer, dryer housing second half side, uh, we're going to try to use a lot of this geometry that we already have. Uh, so we're going to copy everything, but we can't just do a direct copy and paste of the sketches. We actually need to do some editing to those sketches. So in each one of these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the sketch. I'm going to copy it using Control-C. Now I'm going to make a sketch and paste it. Uh, and, you know, you may end up having some issues with the first one. We'll see. But you should be able to basically move it if you just delete this center point. We'll project it back in a minute. But for now, uh, just choose somewhere. So to break the geometry, type in 180. Uh, we'll add some of that geometry back in since we lost it. So I'm putting perpendiculars here. And a vertical constraint here. We'll project the origin point back. And then we'll locate this corner. So now we should have the inverse of the other one. Let me just make sure though. We do. Granted, it's on opposite sides, but it's still the same effect at the end. Okay, so our next step is going to be uh, some work planes. And it looks like they are 2.5, 3.5, and 4.25 over. <coughs> so we'll just go ahead and plug all those in. Oops, wrong face. The wrong value on that first one, I see. Okay, so in that same vein, we'll go ahead and enter the sketch and copy all the goods. Oop. A little trigger happy sometimes. This one delete everything. Make a sketch, paste it. Rotate it. Oops. Make sure you are slash graphics make it more clear. Make sure you are making this point coincident here. And then it appears we are missing a constraint. And that is simply a horizontal constraint. Okay. So we'll do the next one. Basically, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and copy each one of these sketches. Instead of having to redraw it all, uh, we're going to work more with modifying constraints. OK, so I'm going to delete this random point here. Okay, delete it. Apparently, the other one didn't have it trimmed all the way. Okay, and then we will manually move all of that in a second. What we're going to do is project this edge. Now we can just do a coincident, and I'm assuming. Another horizontal. Oh, okay. So let's check it. OK. 
Okay. It was a horizontal. It was just a uh, have any other edge. All right. So same deal. We'll jump to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this other sketch. It's kind of in the way. Delete this extra point. Project this edge. Make it coincident. Fix this being ridiculously long. That's just bad. Okay. Wow, okay. Let's undo that since it wanted to be a douche. Delete that. And we'll just pull it over to where it should be. That way we don't have issues. And since it wants to be difficult with this, we'll make this horizontal. Uh, full disclosure, if you made the projected line construction, it would be very easy to add a constraint to this line because it would take priority. But, you know... Some people may not do that step, so I'll just do it the way that it's more likely to be drawn. And I realized what happened earlier was whenever I made a sketch and pasted and had problems with the extra line, it was the uh, projected line that needs to be deleted out. All right, so we'll do a rotate. Project the edge. Coincident. And I'll make this construction. I'll make this horizontal. And turn off all these planes and make that loft. Okay, so I've got that portion. Let's see what's next. Next we have fillets of 0.15. It's going to be here, here. Actually, is it fillets next? Yeah, I thought there was three. Okay, so we actually need this still. So it's going to be 0.75 and 1.125. I guess we can still copy it. <clears throat> and we'll just copy it all. Delete that, whatever we don't need. Okay, so draw on the YZ sketch plane. I'm going to flip it to match the uh, actual orientation we're going to be seeing. Slice graphics, delete out any lines here. Get this dimension. And we'll rotate. Just to make sure we're looking at that correct. <clears throat> Boy, I hate that whenever you get slice graphics, it doesn't let you project the edge hardly. Okay, so a linear. And we'll put that 1.125 dimension back in if we project our center point. Now 
that's going to be 5.5. Okay, so next we have the fillets. Shell point one two five Okay, so you'll be happy to know um fires don't have like multiple vents typically, so we're not actually going to uh add a vent set on this side. You can if you want to. Um, it would be the same process. You could draw it manually or you could copy and paste each piece. Um, but, you know, I, I Googled a bunch of old-timey hair dryers because these kind of hair dryers are rare now. Uh, and none of them showed a vent on the second side. So we'll just commit to not doing it. So I'll just go ahead and do this portion and we'll go ahead and wrap it up. <laughs> so we'll draw a sketch. Here. I'm deleting out the excess there. Okay, so the other one was, let's just make sure that the width is correct here, but yeah, okay, so the other one was 0 0.0625 uh, starting from the left, so all we need to do is make it 0 0.0625 from the right. And then we'll make a sketch and project the inside edges. Make sure you get the tangents too. Okay, so it should be all of them. And let's do a sweep. <clears throat> oh, looks like I did some uh, bad constraining there. Hmm. Okay. An interesting conundrum, but uh. It makes sense when you look at it. Okay, so like, say I drew a rectangle here and set it to be 0 0.0625, and I set it to be collinear here. As you can see, there would be a hangoff here. This still butts up perfectly. You just got this excess here. We have two options. Uh, we can either leave this and have this goofy edge or we can just draw a little extra and cut it off that's what we'll do because you know if you were trying to assemble this it would be a perfect fit sure but i mean you know it's just ugly so you know if you did have it the other way i wouldn't complain but what we'll do in this case is we'll just make it a little well what we'll do is actually draw an extra set of lines here Okay, so we'll just we'll break this constraint then. How about that? It wants to be difficult and say we can't do it. So we'll make this point one two five. Okay, doesn't like that either. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? 
Let's look at the other one and make sure it does line up like that. Yeah, so it is definitely cutting through all there and poking out a little bit. It doesn't like when we do that, so let's try a little smaller. I mean, I hate to be random about it. bad design. Yeah, so you know what? We'll just leave it. I hate it. It's fine now. You know, you do have the option. You could extrude it all around, but it looks like it's not wanting to take it when we do a switch. But you know, so like, let's put it in assembly. Just so you can see it does work. Okay, so we'll copy the dryer housing. I may have to save this, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, cool. So, say I lazily were to just ground one of these. It's already grounded. Perfect. Go in and constrain this edge. this edge and strain the bottom faces together and we'll do this edge this is not how it actually can strain it here but that works for this a little laggy <laughs> apparently not even the right edge that I click Jeez. Okay. I don't know why it's so laggy, but we'll just constrain it plane to plane. That's fine. Okay. So. Apparently our planes aren't in the same position, so that's unfortunate. Maybe I did a wrong constraint earlier. I did. Okay. So, let's constrain these planes together and let's look at how it lays out. So, XZ to XZ. Granted, you know, this is just for visual representation. I have cut it the wrong way. Oh no, actually. Man, it's so laggy. It's because I'm streaming, but let's turn these edges on to make it a little easier to see. What we'll do is constrain edge okay computer this edge it does in fact look like crap okay Here's one of them's too deep. Oh my goodness, it's because it's supposed to be adding. It's entirely my bad. So obviously if this one's cutting, the other one should be adding. Okay, well, my bad guys. That's... Big waste of time I had for y'all. We'll just copy one over. But you know, you're learning on the fly. Alright, so we'll project this back edge over here. Make this coincident. Probably have to redo the whole path.
tell you, I've never seen my computer struggle like this. A lot of times in this case it's just quicker to delete the feature and make sure it doesn't consume your, delete your consumed sketches. That's what we'll do here. We'll do add. Now it's like that assembly. Naturally the constraint breaks because it's a face-to-face -face mate, which is why I said I wouldn't typically constrain it this way, but okay, so. we go. It's a little too wide still. It technically does work. Honestly, I would probably leave it. When you look at a real hair dryer, they are kind of staggered like that. But if you wanted to get technical, what you could do, I'm going to leave it like this, but what you could do is you could look at this one and Measure up the difference between here and here. There's a little bit of an offset, it looks like, but I think this is more than sufficient. Uh, you know, if you're looking at it, let's do a, a cut. As good as it's going to get. The only thing you could do is like trim off extra, but then you don't have this straight flat. So I would say leave it. It's pretty nice. Okay, so moving on, uh, we've got the intake flange. It looks like a doozy, <laughs> but you know, we'll make it work. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do just draw like one of these and then pattern the rest. We've got a lot going on here though, so I'm just going to kind of draw what it looks like again. As always, looks like we've got a, a vertical line deal going on right here. And something like a double circle. Line coming off of it. Down. Then, like, randomly over. It's a strange shape. <laughs> Okay, so some derpy thing like this. Something a little more like that. The hole. Okay, so let's see. Let's do 1.5 diameter. Radius of 1.25. <clears throat>
And I believe this hole matches that one. It does. So we'll just set it to equal. Okay, so. Uh, so the next hole is 4.5. But it's 1.5 to this. I don't think we need that though. I believe it would be one. <clears throat> so it's one, 1.5, 1 1.5, 1. Yeah. So let's check that. I think this should be one right here. Go ahead and pattern it. We can change it if we need to. I'll add the fillets in after the fact. <laughs> Oop, got to extrude first. Thickness is 0.25. Then we have a fillet of 0.5 here. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. This line should go down further. It should only be 1.25 to here. Stand corrected again. 1.25 to here, 1.5 to here. So then we have one from here to here. Okay. So redo uh, 0.25. Fill it a point five. We have a little random point two five right here. Okay, so now what we're going to try to do is pattern this uh, in this direction. We need four of them. 4.5 apart. Okay, so it turned out my math was a little off there. <clears throat> but, you know, the perk of doing it, the pattern is technically it'll override it. So if you notice there's this overlap, it looks like it's actually a half inch. But, you know, doesn't really matter for the grand scheme if it's long, because if there's nothing in the way, it'll just overlap it. But technically, that value is a half, inch, as you can see. So, uh, let's see if there's anything else we needed there. We did need to pattern this fillet as well, so click and add it in. Yeah, so it should be 19.25 overall. 18, so I did something wrong. I'm missing this. That's what I'm missing. Okay. So for this part, uh, let's just draw it in. Technically, you could draw a line and mirror this, but it would kind of be a pain to you. So. Okay, so uh, should be 0.25. Seems awfully small. Nine plus thirteen point five, eighteen point five. Okay, let's get the calculator out. And 
You hit that wrong button. Oh wait. Okay, so it should be 0.75. It's got a circle after it. Okay, I wasn't sure if it let me just set it to equal without projecting it, but it did. Okay. this we're just gonna do it the easy way sometimes I don't wonder why I do all this math there it is not 2.25 okay we can do an extrude two so now it should be 19.25 and, you know, just to be safe, uh, we can actually measure each of these. So it's one to there. Four point five, four point five, four point five, four. Basically, we do the same throughout just to measure and double check everything, but it's clearly fine. So then I'm actually going to move this down if it'll let me. And it won't. So I'm going to delete this. That's ah, fine. You know what? It's going to be a lot of work. I was going to actually make the fill at one, but it's cool. Sometimes it wants to delete stuff. It would probably have a pink line, which causes lost geometry. We'll just leave it like that. But there's that one. And uh, last but not least is this anchor base. So we'll wrap this up. This one. Um. We'll start with the triangles, this main portion here at the top view. Um, hmm. I guess we'll rotate it. I guess we'll make this double circle our origin. <clears throat> Oops, small, okay. Uh, looking for the whole size here. Okay, so it's 0.5. It doesn't say it, but they're clearly all the same. Oh, these are actually all the same. Copy one over. <coughs> then we have lines that connect. Okay, so first of all, we're going to need a lot of features here. So, looking for a height for this main cylinder here. It's 0.75 because it's these two added. So, we'll go ahead and extrude it before we get too far along. And we're going to do everything up. That way, we can reuse the same sketch over and over. I know that it's not fully defined. Uh, we'll add to it as we go. Okay, so next we've got a circle here. <laughs> um, and it's got to have a size here. It's wall thickness, so 
10. Okay. For some reason, it did not take that that was the center point when I drew it, so make sure it's concentric. And we'll draw a, I don't know, we might be able to do an offset line on it, but we'll just, we'll manually draw it, see if it wouldn't do it. Yeah, okay, now it will. Okay, so definitely offset it. Offset the circle. We'll delete the excess. Okay, so then let's go ahead and trim out some of this before it gets convoluted. And trim this circle out completely. We'll put in the tangents in a minute. So, put tangents in. The perk of offsetting it is you don't have to worry about making these lines parallel, which is why I did that. Definitely a must. This one we need to acknowledge that it's vertical. Unfortunately, since our sketch was rotated, it's actually a horizontal there. Okay, it doesn't need that one. Or that one. Okay, cool. So, it's two between the circles. We will set the midpoint of one of these lines to be aligned to the center. <clears throat> Two and a half here. And that's going to be it. Okay, so now I can finish extruding. So this portion is 0. 0.5. This portion is 5 minus 0.2, so 0.3. Alright, so next we'll go back to that original plane and draw on it again. But this time we'll extrude down. <laughs> uh, and this one's going to be something like this. We're going to delete this. Uh, bottom line here. Make this tangent to this circle. Same here. For whatever reason that tangent didn't quite take. If you have that problem just move it further. Uh, so tangent here and tangent here. Extend them to meet if needed. Add in some double circles. And tangents. Set these circles to equal each other. Trim. So, uh, they're about the point five. Forgot one cardinal thing there. Need to close profile. Gotta project these edges. There we go. And that is 0.25 tall. <laughs> I'm just double checking it. Actually, give us a width there. I may have gotten this wrong. Let's just look and see. 
Okay, cool. So it was three. I assumed it was tangent. Didn't pay any attention after that. Uh, just like I also assumed that these tangents also would be correct. So yeah, even though I drew it a different way than the dimensions it gives you, I still get there. In the end, let's see. Just double check and making sure everything looks correct. And honestly, it seems a little shorter than it should be. We got 0.5 for that. Ah, it's 0.25 because I extruded backwards. Plus, I extruded down earlier. There we go. Unfortunately, in that same vein, that means that earlier when I extruded this, it needed to be both ways. But we want it to be asymmetric. So this one we want to be 0.25. It was 0.25. Looks like we need them all to be. Okay, so you know what? That's fine. What we'll do is we'll just add 0.25 to each of these other sketches. It'll be a lot easier instead of going back and editing and adding extrude down both ways. Just to put in plus 0.25. Plus 0.25. Oh, make sure you don't delete the other stuff that's in there. Plus 0.25. There we go. That looks proportional. I kept thinking, man, what's wrong about this? But you now I'm just missing one crucial step there. So, anywho. Uh, I believe that's it. All right, thanks for watching, everybody.